you that loud, yeah. Uh, is this it? Yes. Well, that sounds, it's just kidding. Good evening, all you minties, and welcome back to another episode of Reels Talk with your host, the amazing Amanda, and my lovely co-host, the uncanny Omar. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Happy birthday, Omar. Well, not yet. Not yet. Okay. We got okay. a bit to go. We got a bit to go. We're just going to celebrate the whole month, though. We're going to be yes. choosing some of my favorite, or you all are choosing some of my favorite genres uh, to, to talk about. Like, you get mm -hmm. one vote, and... Um, People chose from the anime section, Ghost in the Shell. I was really happy to see that Perfect Blue came in second. That's uh, that's another one of my favorite movies of all time. And I, know you really that one. I didn't know that enough people knew about Perfect Blue to to want that. Honestly, um, I almost put Beautiful Dreamer in there because that's actually one of my favorite films of all time. But I thought. I don't know if enough people like anime that much to pick the Lum. It's the second Lum movie, but it's also directed by the same gentleman that went on to direct this movie. And there's a lot of similarities in between both of them. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful movies. So maybe next year, who knows? You know, there there's some obscure. It's true. Uh, anime that people love. He also directed Angel's Egg, which was another one that's. Uh, we didn't really. <laughs> get here in America until I think legally until like the early aughts. Uh, I remember having a bootleg tape of that one for years, but that one's beautifully directed. And it's also got artwork by Yoshi Takamano, who of course did Vampire Hunter D, the novels and uh, Final Fantasy. But today we are talking about Gits Ghost yes. in the Shell. <laughs> congratulations on reaching 50. Why are yes, okay, not rounding Happy up? Birthday. We're not rounding up, okay? We're not. How, how close not. are we? But we are like once you pass five, right? You round up. This is wee stuff. You got a mouse in your pocket? Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm just talking about in school when you talk about rounding up. Look, just because you get yourself a nose ring does not make you <laughs> like, like you oh, can take 10 years so off your life, amazing. okay? Yeah, that doesn't not the way it works. So, not the way it works. When I went to get it done, the guy who did it legit thought I was the same age as the girl I went with, who's 26, by the way. And I said, <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, I'm 38. That's but thank you for thinking I'm 36. Like, I really did think you were younger than 38. I said, clearly you don't know what 38 looks like. Uh, no, not anymore. <laughs> not not with Botox and like uh all these things that we have to prolong our lives. So yeah. you know what what's really sad as a millennial, um, I found out the other day that Stifler's mom from American Pie, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Coolidge, wonderful actress was apparently 38 mm -hmm. in American Pie. Yeah, and, and that's going to hit you because the older you get, uh, the more you're going to realize, oh, my God, I'm the same age. Now I'm older than Chevy Chase and National Lampoon's Vacation. I'm the same age that – or older than all these people that you thought. <laughs> like, I, I'm older, I think, than Danny Glover in Lethal Weapon 1 when he said, I'm too old for this shit. That's wild. Man, like, he was retiring at that age, though. <laughs> <laughs> I am nowhere so near there. Now. We are, it's so different now because I can't even imagine having a teenager for 38, right? But I mean, that's uh, we, we just started a little later, right? Keeps us young, keeps us young. Yeah, that's all of us. That's what we all did. And we all revert back to childhood. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 all good. I don't I don't feel it. That's one thing. So that's, that's important, good. right? Anyway, some some days I wake up sore. <laughs> like, what happened there? I didn't do anything. Uh, so how's everybody doing today? Zack Snyder was just on the Joe Rogan earlier today. Oh. Podcast is out. Awesome. What, cool. did they, what did those two guys come up with? I want to know. Restore the, the, restore the Snyder verse or restore the Rogan verse? What are we doing? I don't know. Did they see the, uh, the pictures that uh, Dunn posted of his inspiration for... Superman and how it's so I'm different. I'm glad you posted Saturday. that picture. I thought that was really cool. Were you there to, when you we saw Joe Rogan years ago? I know Allison was there. She bought the tickets because she oh, was wow. a Joe Rogan fan. I found him pretty funny. I don't 
I haven't listened to that guy in over a decade, though. But I know that he has a podcast now. Soundtrack and score is pretty incredible. Agreed. Sounds a lot like Akira, right? This is going to be interesting to talk about with you. Uh, evening, Amanda and Omar. What's up, Warren and Griffin X and Freddy? Aaron, how are you? Hello, Aaron. What's up, Chris? I hope you both are doing well. Are either of you excited for X-Men 97? Yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. Ten episodes. Ten episodes announced today. Still watch everything Marvel, even if... <laughs> or I guess in the numerals. X, baby. X episodes. Oh, we cursed every, every March to celebrate Omar's Sweet 16. You damn skippy. Yeah. Omar, hey, what's up, Lionheart? Never oh, thought of us as a birth month celebration type of guy. Uh, and me? Oh, my God. Oh, he is. I'm such a prima donna when it comes to my birthday, baby. He melts it for all it's worth. Let me tell you, man. I had a friend of mine that wished me a happy birthday. What was it on Facebook? And I said, bitch, that doesn't count. You better call me. And that was that was a couple of years ago. So he learns now to give me a call or text me on my birthday. The proposal could be an animated movie if you use your imagination. No, it is not. Very strong. Uh, man. If I was 65, oh my God, that would be a blessing because then I would rely on Medicare in this wonderful country that provides old people with Medicare. But no, I got a while to go. Yeah. Homer's 39. Yep. I remember uh, that. That's wow. another one. Archie was Archie. I'm trying to think of Archie and uh, all in the family, how old he was too. Omar just admitted to taking Botox. Have you seen the wrinkles? No. I know. At least Omar still has hair. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's a blessing. I do. I do. Considering most of the men in my family do not. The kids in Greece were 50 and we bought yeah, them were teens. <laughs> Not all of them. We know they weren't that old. They no, weren't they, they, the they were their 20s. Yeah, they were much like a CW teenager would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Already in their 20s, but they're playing a teenager. That's a CW teenager. This is this is so true, uh, Griffin X. The things that you got back to make you feel your age. I, I, I am surrounded by the things of my youth, so I think Same. that's how I keep young. Look at that Psylocke. That's gorgeous, Psylocke. Oh, you should see that's internal. Good, that's a good thigh side. Side thigh. Side thigh? One of my viewers gifted me this. And he was like, be careful showing it. Why? Said, it well, oh, I can't show on the inside. Oh, but, dang. Um, oh, I know. It's very tasty. Yeah, I can show that. Very, very classy. Very classy. Oh, yeah. I hope he didn't say anything stupid. Who, me? Or Zack Snyder? Or Thanks James Gunn? Or Joe Rogan? I'm thinking Zack Snyder on Joe Rogan. Is what more colors on. his hair? No, I do not. These are not the lights that you're seeing, the reflection. These are actual some grays there. Uh, I want to know if more printed off and glued those missing pages into the complete <laughs> art cover of yeah. what Micronauts and X Men. I'm gonna have to also. What is Sila? Like? Yeah, I'm glad I brought her down. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Woo! This is a Brazilian artist named Lane. He, well done. There's a white queen in here. Yeah, gorgeous. There's a she, actually I could show this Shira. It's not. Yeah. Let me see. I like that. It's really pretty, beautiful. Look at that. Oh my god. Black and airy. Black and airy. Mm -hmm. Oh dang. Yeah, yeah. She's got uh, thick legs on her. She looks. I want to say she looks like me. I'm not gonna be that uh, narcissistic, but she got thick legs on her. <laughs> I <have to> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say the same thing. Uh, Omar is older than Omni Dog. No, Elon, no. thank you for the super thank sticker. Omar sticker. still looks 30. Thank you for that. It goes in the shell. Hmm, was not a fan back in the day. I'm curious your thoughts oh, now. Interesting. If I want to send you coal on your birthday, where do I send it to? We do have a PO box you can send coal or anything to. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know why you would send coal, but where is it? Oh, it's in the description of this video. P.O. Box something, right, Amanda? You put yes, it, it is. On the video, it's in the video, and I don't know if we have a banner for Human it. Human Condition, P.O. Box 5204, Frankfort, Kentucky, 40602. I'll create a banner for it. I don't. I think it, all our banners were deleted on accident. Well, uh, are we trying to save space? There's a good chance we're trying to save space because we needed all of these amazing gifts, like this one. <laughs> oh, yes, Black Canary. Renee Spawn is who sent me that. Okay. Uh, he should not feel terrible. It was wonderful. Am I the reason Omni Bros isn't live right now? Are they not live? I can't keep up with those guys. But I talked to my buddy Jess, who thinks he's got COVID. Uh, so I don't know what those guys are doing or not. 
I, I do know that he might have COVID, which is no bueno. What is this boob book? It's not a boob book. It's a leg book, apparently. Lots of uh, legs. Hey, Omar and Amanda, love the pictures of James yes. Ghost. Christopher's inspiration of Superman besides Donner. Love it. Yeah, right? Where is Renee? Oh, yeah. Probably passed out. It's not big. It's called Thick. Thank you for that, Warren. Okay. Just like I like my Omnis. Are there any plans to get Todd McFarlane on the channel soon? I'd love to see him with you guys. I interviewed him three years ago. I think it's time to reach back out and see if he wants to come back. Yeah. How would I rate Olivia Munn's oh, dialogue? Yeah. I That's was not a fan. I think she's a really pretty lady. I just don't think she was right for the role. She looked completely uncomfortable in every scene. She destroyed, and I mean destroyed, the scene where they go to the holocaust like like they're 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 at uh you know oh my god the, this concentration camp and all she is doing there she can't stand still and i get it but act like you belong in that bathing suit all right? she's looking like she's trying to pick a wedgie the entire time and i found that scene so awful uh it. but not my feet not, not one of my not my choice not a funny gal funny gal I don't know if I've seen her in anything else that I liked her, but yeah. yeah. Not my favorite pick for Psylocke, that's for sure. New York Condition, P.O. Box 5204, Frankfort, Kentucky, 40602. Thank you, sir. James coming in. James is always coming in on the clutch, yes, man. Yes, he always has it all. Um, I don't know. He hasn't tested yet. He hasn't tested for COVID, so... We will, we, I'll, I'll check with him tomorrow, see how he's doing. Uh, I miss that old school 80s, 90s hand drawn anime. This modern age computer generated stuff is trash. Looking at you, Berserk anime. I do want uh, to talk about this animation, particularly the scene behind us. Well, holy crap. Well, I mean, okay, to, to be fair though, there is CG in this movie. As sure. a matter of fact, I, I think part of the reason why we blew up with CG, why Studio Gonzo, if you're not familiar with that studio, was a studio that gave us a blood, blah, Blue Submarine number six, and then they blew up, had a mix of like CG and that hand-drawn style. And I think a lot of it was in response to this because it was such a popular thing. at and is working on fine tonight. Yes, sir. Make space to lead yeah, Omar's cat. Yeah, thank here. Welcome to no, the nobody may, no matter better delete my gifts. And we'll Bro. just replace with Stilgar gifts. <laughs> oh, you want me to get Sal? I, I got his number. I should, yeah, he's a good dude. I really like him. I just have to find the right thing for both of us to talk about. Because believe it or not, Sal doesn't like collected editions. And that's what my channel focuses on. So I may have to get him on a show where we're rating our, like, uh, you all have sent in so many freaking, uh, just ideas for the shows that we have for like evergreen with me and Peter and odd uh, I want to get Amanda on that show, but I want to talk about like either like the most important women in comics, not creators, but just like ladies in comics of DC and then Marvel. I think it, that would be a fun show to do. Uh, that was a suggestion by a couple of ladies. So thank you all for suggesting those things. That's a good and um, you know, best X-Men, or the top 10 best moments in comics. So it's been a lot of fun. And you all have sent in some wonderful recommendations. Speaking of interviews, I'd love to see. I like to interview JMS. Olivia Munns yes. looked like how Psylocke should look. They didn't give her any lines. What is she supposed to do? I think Stand that's there awesome. like a professional and not look like somebody that's completely that, uncomfortable. But that also on purpose that they didn't give her any lines as well. That's what I'm afraid oh, of. Oh, that's right. Because she was in Predators or Predator. One of the Predator movies. And she was awful in that. Yeah. Good evening all. The best X-Men film it's first class era is first class in days of future past days yeah. of future past is amazing yeah i wouldn't mind mun trying to pick a wedgie <laughs> okay yes. let's attack the show yes attack of the show is what it was called i'm the opposite on anime and comics from you omar try to guess the animes i you like and hate um so if you hate an anime then Warren's oh I, I hated berserk season two so i'm sure you probably loved it more there you go did you? Hey, literature and there's our buddy Torin. He was kind enough to have us on his show. I was there for just a little bit yesterday to talk about the Oscars. Yes. And I'm sorry I missed it, Tor Torsten, but I'm really glad that I got to catch up with you guys later in the chat on Discord. And why we get to do that is because we have a Patreon. And if you're in our Patreon, you get to have like outside discussions with me and Omar sometimes about movies. <laughs> All the time, maybe. <laughs> you know how often I it says the best woman in DC, Power Girl, best Marvel, Rogue or Storm. See, Warren, we do share things in common. 
Look at that. Let's take all a moment to look back and fondly remember Toonami. Rest in peace, Toonami. Um, didn't they bring it back or weren't they going to bring it back? This is a great movie. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. I know. Sal we goes live a lot. Things. He loves talking about stories more than formats, it seems. He's not an X-Men super fan like you, though. No, no, he's not. Uh, but, and actually, we he hates a story that I love, and I hate a story he loves. Maybe I should bring him back to do that. We did do an episode like that before, though. What was it? It was during COVID, and uh, we got together. He's a lot of fun. Super knowledgeable guy. And uh, and on top of that, a really nice guy if you ever get to meet him. Best anime to meet? Oh, Captain Harlock. Captain Harlock, right? And Devil Man. So you're a big mm -hmm. fan of uh, Go Nagai and Leiji Matsumoto. Yeah. Oh, God, dude. Captain Harlock was my childhood. I got you. I got you. I thought they brought it back. The warm and fuzzy I got from the original Ghost of the Shell flick I also got from Cyberpunk Edge Runner show. Probably my favorite new modern anime. Uh, why I'm due projects King of My Castle was such a banger back then, and I wasn't even into house music. Um, okay. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait a second, Elon. Hold on a second. Let me get this really quick. Ranky oh, Vangelion no. Ghost in the Shell and Akira. All right, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with original Evangelion. Do I count the movie, the end of Evangelion, to wrap up the series, or do I do just do the 26 episodes? Uh, but I have to go with the best is Akira to me. Still, I love it. Um, I do like that type of film. <laughs> probably Evangelion. It means a lot to me. Of course, it's mid to Warren though. It means a lot to me. My wife and I am actually can't do a show next wednesday right i have we have to do it another day because we got to go see the end of evangelion oh sweet okay yeah and that's that's in theaters in america right, for the I'm first time gonna... hell yeah i'm gonna drag it's my birthday month i'm gonna drag you to all these movies you don't have any interest in i want your head to explode um so yeah i, I would go with evangelion and then go to the show the movies yeah that's how i would put it akira to me was the most important influential not anime just movie out there like it's probably top five most influential movies of all time it's amazing akira i just thought was boring of course you did boring uh, what man, do you like definitely different people oh oh it's march 20th thank you for james oh, not next week after. oracle That's i remember perfect. giving my computer virtual aids from downloading bootleg anime oh rest in peace lime wire that's oh, why we, lime that's lime why we had uh that's why we had FTPs. I have a list of potential top tens. Tiger Eyes is my dude, and he's going to be joining me yeah. when we kick off the Tiger Eyes poll, named after him. So I was like, dude, you got to be there. You've been doing this for 12 years. I have a list of potential top tens for you. Top 10 gateway manga, top 10 animated. Ooh. Ooh. Animated? Oh, dude, yeah. that's a good one. That might be a good panel. Like, So what we do, Amanda, is we curate our evergreens, like what, what people should keep in print. And it's a lot yeah. of fun. But what we could do for animated films, we could get a gang together to see what the most importance are and to build like the ultimate top 10 definitive what list. What you should watch. We should. That'd be a fun. Like, That'd be a fun episode. And yeah. then we have like a ranking. We are typing them in as we go and then changing the rankings around so we get to our final one. Yeah. Oh, I like that idea. Thank you, Tiger Eyes. Yes. Uh, what's the Tiger Eyes poll? The Tiger Eyes poll is something he started in the Marvel Masterworks. He is a legend. He pretty much puts a poll together every year. Well, this year we're doing it differently because we're actually helping him um, to write down your most wanted Marvel omnibus. I think he gives you 10 votes. And this year we're actually doing a poll so you don't have to write it down. And he doesn't have to go through hundreds of emails because even last year when I gave him a shout out, people were just uh, <laughs> spamming his emails back. It was rough for him. So I was like, I'll take care of it this year. Call me for that panel. No, Josh. Uh, I'm call I will, I'll call your mom, though, Josh. I'll get your mom on the show. <laughs> Maybe oh. she'll give you a shout out. <laughs> Discotech Media puts out neat oldie anime. You know, I'm glad that they came around because they used to put out, like, their – I know we got to talk about this, but really quick. Like, they used to do the subpar job of just upscaling DVDs and calling it a Blu-ray. Oh, they were awful. But they have come around. Anime tier list. All right. I'm going to get the most knowledgeable people for anime. Me, clearly. Me, first, Amanda. First and I'm dog. <laughs> the most knowledgeable in anime. As you sit here and just spout all these names 
and things that Oh, we, dude, your daughter's in the anime. You'll I get know. there. Like, she did. I, I give you five. Let me give you five years until you get the berserk symbol right there, covering up your Fallout boy. Not before you get it. Not before your, it's you gonna get it. of the sacrifice right there. But it's not gonna ever fill up my Fallout boy tattoo. Oh, it will. Ever. Watch, just watch. Um, no, but when I was watching Ghost in the Shell, like the ending had come on, and she came over to school. She's like, "What's that?" Like, "Ooh, what is that?" I was like, "Oh, it's an anime." movie <laughs> when she gets a little older she'll learn i mean do you want to yeah it's i mean there's it's out like, it's out there they're it's boobs there. i mean are they i mean they're they're cyborg cyborg boobs mm -hmm. are they part of her outfit i'm still it's i'm still curious about where like her outfit is like what there's well, this she's, one scene she's clearly naked but then there's like a line right here like a demarcation line which would exist yeah because she's shoes. got cybernetic remember in this future you can replace yes. your body parts oh, like she yeah. is completely cybernetic with the exception of her soul or at least what we believe brain. her soul is no not her brain oh yes yeah, her soul her soul which it goes into the whole mind body dualism right that we can talk about and that's that's a deep conversation all right everybody hold on to your butts let's talk about ghost in the shell very Good. excited to talk about this amanda give me a what you think this movie was about give me a rundown of what you think the movie was about and then we'll talk about of course, like the, the the plot points, the animation, and then yeah. oh my God, the symbolism, which is just everywhere. There's lots of symbolism. Okay, so I, I'm gonna look at my notes for like names because I know. So we have our our we have our it's set in 2029, which guys. Scarlett Johansson remembers, and that's it. No, she did, she's the only one. Um, yes, but. It's 2029, which let's not forget is only five years away. I don't, I don't want to think about that. That is I so don't think our future will look like this, but nevertheless, it is interesting to, to imagine. Wow, we really thought that the future was really going to progress a lot faster in 95, didn't we? Well, we didn't expect to live past 2000. Do you remember that? That's true. I guess that's that's very true. <laughs> By the way, a big thank you to Dom of X for creating the new thumbnails. Uh, yes, the they're amazing, by the way. So big thank you, Dom. Really appreciate it. Yes. And I made a mistake and thought that Ghost in the Shell was released in 97 in America, but it was actually released in 1996 in America. Mm. But it did come out in 1995 in Japan, where it originated <laughs> from. We are five years away from Ghost in the Shell. I mean, with Facebook shutting down the other day, I, I almost kind of believe that. Like I know. an extension of ourselves, we are. All right, Amanda, give me the rundown, baby. Give yeah, rundown. okay. So we are introduced to a cybernetic um character named Major Matoko Kusanagi. And she is this team leader for this um assault team, and another person that is what is his name? Batoa. Yeah, Batoa, is that how you pronounce it? Batoa? Bato? Uh, but uh Bato. Bato. yeah. Bato. Now, right. did you watch it? In, you watched it in English, right? Because I, I think it's the, it only, English. it's the only way that it's available on, on Amazon Prime. Prime. Yeah, that's where um, I watched. This is only my second time watching it in English. I've never. I saw it in English once because I didn't have a choice in '96, and then everything else after that was in um, Japanese dub with English subtitles. And I've forgotten some of my favorite voice actors are in the English dub, and I've forgotten how bad some of the other voice actors were in the English dub. Yeah, the yeah we can talk about the English dub Go voice ahead. acting. Okay, anyways, so they are essentially on trying to find this, um, I guess we call it like a perpetrator or a criminal called the Puppet Master who has been kind of infiltrating all of these different cybernetic, um, you know, beings, and they have like, so you have like your brain within your cybernetic body, and they call it the ghost and the shell is your shell of a body, right? Something along those lines. I think I'm getting that right. And mm -hmm. this person or whoever it is, this puppet master has been hijacking these um, people's brains and they're, you know, trying to figure out who this person is. And we come to find out through the story that it's a actual like sentient, that I, AI, because it very distinctly says, I am not AI. I'm like a network that has become sentient and I understand and, and so its whole goal in life is to be human or be what like feel like what it's like to be human, to be alive, I guess, in a way. Um, and so they are trying to track down this puppet master. Of course, there's some internal government stuff going on. So clearly 
There is, um, they're part of like public security section nine. This all came from public section six. And in the beginning of the movie, they're trying to, they're trying to stop this. Um, oh God, what does he, what does he do? He's a programmer. His name is Dita and he's trying to defect to another country and they prevent that. And Dita apparently is the person who, um, who has a connection to this sentient being called project 2501. And there's this body that it's trying to get into. It's a female body. It's very beautiful, blonde haired, blue eyed, a synthetic body. And so as they're trying to, this is the best way I can describe it. As they're fighting and figure out, you know, who's the bad guys, who are the real guys. So she, so Kusanagi ends up going inside the mind of this cybernetic body where the puppet master is and they have this whole conversation and he's basically like i've been looking for you because we need to merge in order for us to merge and he has this really deep and complex discussion about the fact that there's concept of how we can evolve and how humans could create life and as a robot, you're not really, you can like create copies of yourself, but you're not really creating new, different life. And you also can't die, right? Because you are just recopying yourself. So these are things that this puppet master, Project 2501, wants to experience. And somehow by merging with Kusanagi, he believes that he can do that. And of course, you have this section six that's trying to stop all this. And they have these um, snipers that come in and they try to kill both Kusanagi and the puppet master. But of course, Batao is there to save her, at least her brain. And then when we get to the end of the movie, her, her consciousness, her soul has been placed into another body of a young girl, but has it merged with the puppet master? I guess it has. I've kind of laid it to up to interpretation, but she um, ends up, you know, walking off. She doesn't stay with Batow. She walks off. And that's kind of how the movie goes, in a sense. There's a lot to it. I don't know. There's a lot to it. It took me a couple of times to watch it. Well, okay. So, uh, no, no, no. You, 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 you did good. It is a really difficult movie to try to describe. Uh, it's more of an experience. So it, you, you did really good. Uh, the, the benefit of like having read the manga and then like having uh you know been an anime follower for so many years is that you know that there is a sequel there's actually a oh. couple of sequels and, and there's a remake too of ghost in the show which is really interesting that they decided to to do a remake like go back and do C a cg remake um but the main thing you hit it the main thing about this is the whole idea of you know what exactly is the difference yeah of in this a, hum a human soul yeah. and something that can go um uh, that can be created yeah Sometimes. without you know you take away because even in this future now it goes deep into detail in the manga but the manga is also really different like the manga has these like i i, I love the manga I'm a big fan of the manga, but I also love the movie because the movie is more serious. Like Kusanagi uh, Montoko, the main character yeah, in the manga, she has like these almost like childish type of like facial expressions. Like she has the tropey manga and anime kind of goofy expressions oh. that you never see here because the never one thing don't. that was decided by Mamoru Oshii, who directed this, was she's never going to blink. Which almost gives her a creepy doll like, oh, like like, she, like yes. the way she talks, the way even when she says things that you're like, oh, she's she is she's still female, uh, like she said it's that time of it's my time of the month, but she wasn't really talking about that, right? Yeah, she was talking about something else, uh, the delivery of her lines, and even when the puppet master kind of used her voice that you you think she she is hijacking. Makoto, but all yeah. she's doing is just using that line from the Bible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought the attention to detail was so amazing in this. Hold on it a second. Really Let me get this super chat. Uh, modern version of Brainiac, I think, took from this. 
I can see that. And honestly, I mean, there's no, oh, but there's no denying how much this inspired. Like, obviously, the Matrix, right? The Matrix from just the intro scenes, like not this scene, but you know, when when the the words are, yeah, that right there on the screen, yeah. that's the beginning of the Matrix. Well, and I mean, the idea of, of, of jacking stuff. into right. Oh yeah, that is the Matrix. Yeah, you're right because the Matrix came out in '99, right? Yeah, yeah. So this was '95. There's plenty of time to take inspiration. Well, I mean, the concept of AI or anything like this network, this sentient being, and being able to hijack different things. I mean, we saw it most recently in Dead Reckoning Part One. I'm. It's become like a thing, especially now in our society. Like, because even though we don't have, we're not. There's no fine line right now between humans and where our where our soul is and where our cybernetic body parts end because we haven't gotten that far. Yes, we have people who can have like titanium legs or knees or, you know, have an artificial heart, lungs put in, but it's not, we're not to the point where where's what's human of us and what's not right. So right. if you could transfer your, your thoughts into a cloud and think about that, right? Because that is, that is the fear that a lot of us have a lot of people. Not not last of us, I'm sorry, but like uh, not not all of us, but um, some people do believe that that's where AI is going. If yeah. you if AI can capture everything that you are because of social media and the things you buy and you, maybe your online journal or maybe your online fanfics, if it can grab all of that and put your essence in a way into a cloud, then what is the difference between that and a soul? Yep. Because the, the whole idea, because, okay, so that's what I really like about this movie is very vague as far as, because you mentioned that her brain is the only thing. Yeah, sort of, but sort how much of. of her brain? We don't, we don't know how much yeah, of her yeah. brain is left. And that is yeah. the only human thing that's still, uh, by the end of the movie, she decides that there is no difference. And that's yeah. like, and I know it's open to interpretation, of course, but when she decides to walk and like, she's like, yeah, I mean, there's no difference. Yeah, that's why you come out of this. There's no difference between AI and what separates us from AI, which is a soul. Because which if all it is is procreation, then you can just keep those bodies going, kind of like what they proved here, right? Yeah, I exactly. mean, there's all all these motifs through here, like the birth motif at the very beginning. Oh yeah, she's like you know, she's sitting like in a fetal position, right? And she's coming out of the water. Yeah. It's also, amazing. Very matrix. <laughs> That's matrix. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a but, lot of. I mean, but it's yeah. art inspiring art, right? Like this oh, yeah, part from how, other things too, of course. Even the in name yeah. Ghost in the Shell. Oh, 100 percent. And no, there's a, there's a lot of motifs of that birth and regeneration that it goes on throughout the movie. That yes, you're right. It's like it seems like it's a pretty simple plot when you think about it. It's there's a bad guy. We have to find the bad guy. It turns out the bad guy is inside the is inside these machines the whole time. How are we going to infiltrate them? And then then it just gets very existential. But there's a lot of existential. Yes, and I, I love and that. That's what makes it more than just because it's what it's you know it's easy to make a popcorn flick like this and it be like oh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Where's the existentialism in that? There's not a lot. I mean, let's face right. it. Right. Well, and honestly, the way this was marketed, at least here in America, it was marketed as as the next action flick. We had just it was Terminator, it was right? it was uh, translated and brought over to America by Manga. That was the publishing or the the company that was translating anime and bringing it over. And they also did Ninja Scroll. The trailer to this had the same music, like this hardcore rock music that the trailer to Ninja Scroll did. And I love Ninja Scroll. That was one that people could have voted for. Uh, but I also know Ninja Scroll doesn't really make you think like this, right? Like this makes you think. And that's why I love this movie. Um, because it, in Ninja Scroll, it's just a bunch of ninjas fighting yeah. samurai and, and beating the crap out of each other, which is amazing. And I hope we review it one day. Uh, and this for the trailer, they would show the scene where she's in the water. And that was amazing when like, she's breaking the dude's wrist oh, and she's know. flipping him over. That was awesome. Freaking amazing. Uh, but that was the way it was marketed here. So I remember I watched this with a group of friends. Some of us liked it, but most of us hated it. Wow. Most of the group was like, what the hell is 
Think about how far ahead this was. I didn't even have the internet when this was coming out. This is 1996 when we saw it. I didn't I mean, have the internet. I mean, there's still dial-up. I don't I mean, know what the, I didn't know what the hell the cloud was outside of the little no, cloud that Mario rides. <laughs> we were so ahead, so ahead. Yes. <laughs> but, and and when you're watching it, you know, I watched it when I was 18, and yeah. the same group of friends that were 18, 17. We weren't ready to think like that. We were like, "Hey, man, they promised this Ninja Scroll." What the heck? This scroll. is so boring. I remember. Yeah, some of my, one of my friends, Seth, was like, "I'm out. This is. I don't." I don't even know what's going on. Is she a real chick? I came here for cyborg titties and fighting. Oh, and I didn't need a one. You also got that really awesome scene, which I really was hoping to find a gif of. Um, when she's trying to, because there's, so the body with the, the cyborg body that Project 2501 wants to hijack. Yes, that blonde hair. There's some titty. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Uh, she's she's in now. that car. And uh, Matoko's like, all right, I'm going to go in. And then come to find out there's this massive tank camouflaged over yeah, her. Oh, I love that tank. And so she has to take it out. And that final scene, which is why she looks like the way she looks like. Um, she, like, just, you see her ripping it apart. And her whole body just starts to, like, the skin starts to tear away. And the bone, like, the not real bones. Oh, dude. Like, it just, and then the. They, yeah, her cyborg, everything just ripping apart. That, that part was, was so cool. awesome. That's, that's what I love about, like, clearly she's naked for most of it. I was like, oh, this but that's is all. Part of, that, that's gaze. part of the whole thing, right? But yeah. She, does, not, she like, doesn't care she because she. at all. Like, right, because she doesn't, she doesn't think of being naked as something sexual. No, yeah. Whereas Bato does, right? Like, when he's with her, he tries to put his uh, jacket that's on her. Jacket around her, because yeah. Because he's. And then you get the sense, oh, all her humanity is gone. He still feels like or thinks he's human because yeah. of that. And is that what separates us exactly. from machine? Because she has given up everything. So her walking around naked is nothing. Okay. Right. Yeah. She's just it's just a lair. What really matters. Again, it goes back to the whole idea of the whole mind body dualism, which yeah. has been around for ages. Right. And, uh, yeah. and if you want to get a little more of that, let's watch Evangelion. Oh, my God. What it what is human? Is is this is is this human or is it what's in here or in here? And that's what she's trying to figure out. That's what both the puppet master and her are trying to figure that's out so at funny. the end. And yeah. I love that. You know, like I said, going back and re-watching it. Yeah. It, Try it, to get into the anime show. Standalone complex. Oh, I like standalone complex. That's a lot closer to the manga. It was good. You just have to hit it at the right time, though, man. I think like you got to be in the mood for something like that. Still, yeah. lots of action, lots of action. I'm here for the cyborg titties and chew gum, and I'm all out of gum. Oh, no, we have no, we have no gum for you to chew. Yeah, and it's and what's great is it's not. I mean, there's also the other layers of like government cover up because right, Section Six is trying to cover up the fact that Project Two Five Zero One, which is probably of their making, mm -hmm. even exists in the first place. So there's all those different elements going into it, as well as that exit. Like, there's a lot to really dive into with this movie not just oh it's some ai cyber robots attacking each other and one's going to take the other one over like it's not just that simplistic even though it was probably marketed that way and a lot of people probably thought it was until they got in there like oh there's a lot more to this if you really think down deep yeah this movie I mean, has a great to line the film too oh yeah i mean Borrowed heavily again from you know biblical source the the, the, uh, yeah. the uh, tree of life the Yad Yadrasil, which yeah. of course also what? showed up in other of, of his work. The Basset Hound, by the way, is one of my favorite <laughs> Easter eggs that he puts in every one of his movies. Oh, does movie. he? Oh yeah, Pat uh, Pat Labor or uh, I think he owns a Basset Hound. And plays a big important part or a bigger part in the Innocence movie. Uh, this movie asks a disturbing question of how much you can subtract yes. from yourself and still be you. A limb, an organ, what about your whole body? Right. I love that. It's so creepy in that aspect. I know. I'm currently reading the manga. Man, I'm confused. Don't mind the nudity. Though. <laughs> I am 100% honest. Whenever I did an overview of this, um, you want to read everything. I'm not kidding. Uh, he is notorious for this. Like, okay, so here's all this, right? This is uh -huh. all the pages. Oh, here, let me highlight myself and I'll show you. Exactly how, how do I highlight you? I got so you. I got you. 
So he's notorious for this. So he's uh, this is just a random page. And then at the very bottom is all of that text. You have to read that text to better understand the world. It's not like Mad Magazine where, you know, oh, it's an extra joke or, oh, it's a footnote. Uh, oh, no. I'll, I'll, no, it is important because it's the world building that he then put into the panels. Oh, this district, this, what's it called? This is when so-and-so fought in 19... Oh, my gosh, it's that's insane. That's what's the Bible that you can read? It's not the... Oh, God. Is it a study Bible? What kind of Bible can you read? It has, like, all the stuff on the side that gives you all the footnotes of what's going oh, on. Oh, yeah, that's the... Isn't it the NIV? The, that NIV. Bible? Is it the right? New England? Is it the New... Uh, yes, it is the NIV. I mean, you can buy several Bibles like that, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it is so important in this book. I normally, you know, I would skip things like that. But when I was young, I was like you too, because I was getting them in individual single issues, and I was so confused. I'm like, I don't get it. What the heck is going on? And then I was like, Oh, it's really important to read everything. I'm just waiting for someone to say, What is what a is man? It? A miserable little pile of secrets. The it's author's true. edition. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I, I recommend not the deluxe. I recommend the uh, box set. I think the box set has better paper stock. The colors look better in the box set. Uh, the, the paper stock they're using in this is, it doesn't do the art justice. There's a lot yeah. of bleed through. And yeah, you're better with the box set that has all three of the volumes. I don't think you get, you actually get more in the box sets as far as art, like the extras and stuff. Yeah. Um. Okay. What did not work for you, Amanda? Because uh, this is your first time watching it, and it's it kind of my first like, time watching it. And if you were watching it while you were doing your nails, or while you were doing no. a crossword puzzle, or Sudoku, or posting your uh, TikToks on the uh, Fallout Boy page, you're gonna be lost because you missed something, and you're like, "What?" Yeah, no, I had to watch it a couple of times because the first time <laughs> I was kind of half watching it. Um, the second time I was watching it was luckily when my daughter was down for a nap, so it was kind of like, "Be quiet and just pay attention to this." Um, what didn't work for me? That's a great question because there's a lot of aspects that I really liked in the film. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, at first I would have thought the pacing, but I really think when I look back at it, the pacing lends itself to the type of film that it is. Um, I don't know. I don't really think there's a lot I disliked about Ghost in the Shell, honestly. Okay. What did you think of the music? Oh, I love the music. It was like, it's so distinct. It's wild. I love the music, especially like um, as soon as it comes on, even for example, um, I walked in the other room and Corey had gotten home and he just turned it back on. And I was like, are you watching Ghost in the Shell right now? Because I wasn't even in the room, but I could already know what the intro of the, like as it opens, what the song was, because it's such a distinct and just like, there's like this deep uh, reverberation that kind of goes in the music that I really like that I think makes it ominous, which you wouldn't expect for this type of film, right? Because when you think of these type of action films, you don't think of this kind of music, but it was necessary for this film because of what it was trying to tell as far as the message behind mm -hmm. it. Uh, so did you catch like, that's kind of the same thing they did in Akira, right? Yeah, it is. It's very non-traditional Japanese, like, uh, I, oh my God, who was it for this? I don't, I don't think it was Cantonese. I'm trying to think of who they got to, to do it, uh, to do the singing. Uh, but, oh my gosh, it's, it's eerie. You're right. So and weird. also timeless. Yes. At the same time. Cause it was, it, it could have been a movie that took place you know, in feudal Japan. But the future setting also works. Yeah. Five years from now. Five years from now. <laughs> oh, it's a Hungarian church theme mixed with other things. With oh, the which yeah. is exactly what they did in Akira. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another 90s classic was the Street Fighter 2 animated movie. To this day, I love Street Fighter. I actually watched that one dub. And it's got like all these 90s bands that were huge in America then. Yeah, so kind of like Alice in Chains and stuff like that, and on the soundtrack. And let's not forget about the Chun Li versus freaking Vega fight scene. Although it starts off a little pervy with her in the shower, that's a nice touch. That's icing on the cake if you like fight scenes. Um, but I still prefer Fatal Fury, the motion picture by yeah. Masami Obari. 
that thing to me is a masterpiece. I love every every frame of animation in that movie. When I watched it back then, I always had an yes. feeling from it I never could explain. And I think that's what you're supposed to get out of it, right? Yeah. Uh, fun fact, Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad voiced Fei Long in Street Fighter. Fei Long, really? Animated movie. He also did some voice. I knew he did some, uh, Power Ranger stuff. Good for we're trying. Bought the Dark Horse original eight-ish. Same, Lars, same. Got the two movies, got the two seasons of Standalone Complex, and it is one of my favorites. Yeah, there's a reason why it's on. It was on the list. No, uh, because it's this. This rating is not even for me. Because anybody that has seen last year, all these movies to me are ten out of ten. Oh, you uh, talking about? You find Ghost in the Shell? I mainly, I mainly chose movies so you can yeah, watch would, an experience well, for the first time. Yeah, and what's interesting about it is if you watch it as a Western um, audience goer like myself, who typically watches. American made or you know Western films, it mm -hmm. is different in the way it does tell the story a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's definitely why I had to watch it twice, not just because I was only maybe like do think I could do other stuff while I was watching it the first time, but it does tell the story in a different way. Then it's not as straightforward, and you really have to pay attention to how the characters are interacting and what's going on in order to get what's going to happen. You know five steps ahead, right? So there is a lot more nuance to just the storytelling, which I wasn't used to, which is not a negative. It's just something that I was, that I noted while I was watching the film. But man, the artwork. So there's like, obviously this shot's beautiful, but there was a shot when they're on the, the ground level in between buildings and they're panning up. And if you look at it for just a second, you think it's real. Like they yeah. just, it mm -hmm. looks, gorgeous and because i've been watching a lot of animated lived in like demon slayer and spy family and just, and those are good yeah, for their i mean and no okay yeah. big difference though right that's tv that's budget. true this is a multi-million but just the, women, the, char the characters are drawn like right i know it's more grown up obviously this is a much more mature supposed mm -hmm. to be a much more mature film than like say spy family or demon slayer or anything like that but just i could definitely tell this is a different time of anime than what we see currently just the way it's drawn just the way the um the people are drawn things like that it just has a different look to me than what i used to of the more modern anime i guess i've seen um recently but i love does it, it does it make you appreciate that hand-drawn animation yes. and and make you like because there's a lot of us that miss it because now it's yeah. a completely different art style, right? Oh, now yeah. everything is CG with hand-drawn animation layers Somewhere. that kind of takes your eyes a little bit to get used to. But once you're an episode or two in, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is good. But you forget how beautiful, how wonderful, how momentous it was to have hand-drawn animation and go, holy crap, somebody drew all of those hairs and, 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 and yeah. all those bullets and all those muscles kind of like akira right like it, it's oh. now there is like i said a little bit of cg in here um, yeah it, it is known for that but uh, there's a lot of hand-drawn stuff but like just... so when so when she's going you showed it earlier when she's going into that using that cloaking like the camouflage yeah like that right there i just love oh, yeah. how as she's floating it just becomes like you can't even tell that she was there which is the whole point right you know that right there was actually originally in a movie with uh scarlett johansson and they stole it from the scarlett johansson movie and this is how you get canceled uh because somebody's gonna clip that <laughs> i never saw that movie it's so wild i mean uh, i think we actually put it on our poll one time was it really that bad right it's rated pretty we did, awful we did recently for live action adaptation like we did that airbender and everyone picked uh what was it Oh my god, we just we just reviewed it. What the hell did we just was it Dragon Ball? Because that was awful. No, it wasn't during Dragon Ball. Oh gosh, guys, what did we just review that you guys had picked for live uh, action? Uh why can't I remember? We just did it, Omar. We have, I didn't like it, whatever it was. Honey, I'm, I'm gonna be 46. <laughs> oh, we did like it, but speed racer. <laughs> Okay, I like Speed Racer. Racer. I've seen that before, though. Yeah, yeah, I like it. More divisive film that would have we would have remembered. I I have seen this was during my heyday of anime. Let me tell you, Carl. I, by the way, I always say this every time you show up, brother. I love your Bob the Goon avatar. 
this was the this was my era of anime. So I was buying every VHS or bootlegging it. I was getting stuff imported from Japan. And it was just, it was to me my glory days of anime. I was making my own money, didn't have a girlfriend. I was I had my own apartment and I was just drowning in anime VHS. So yes, Tekken, but it was awful. I did like Battle Re uh, Battle Arena Toshinden. I remember that one. And uh, well, what was the one fighting game? Gao Kaiser? Gao Kaiser. Yeah. Also by uh, 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 Obari. He also did that too. And I'm a big fan of, of Obari. New series. Was it really that memorable? <laughs> Phil. Honestly, that's really how I feel to that. The fact that I didn't. Yeah, how did Avatar? Did. I think a lot of people voted going, how dare you? desecrate on the name of speed racer by yeah I think, and we were like i actually liked it yeah it would have been more fun to do like ghost of the <laughs> or last air better but um so omar how do, what do you believe do you where where does life what signifies life because like one of the well, things, wait are we gonna have that kind of talk or you want me to talk about the movie we're talking about uh, the puppet master talked about how like what is dna right yeah it's so program. To I, like, yeah. <laughs> Have you, you you've heard of Cart uh, Kardashian dualism, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got big into that when I was in my early twenties because when I was younger, when I was a kid, even as a child, I would think, "What? Wh who? What am I?" Is yeah. this, is this, is this me? Dude, I was four years old and I'll never forget. Like I got, it got so weird. It almost became like a out of body experience. And I tell this to my friends um, and you know, we were drinking one day and one guy goes, dude, I did the same thing. And we stayed up talking about this for like hours. We stayed up to like 11 o'clock the next day, but I was big into that like in my early 20s like a strong believer in that you know the separation of mind and soul and, and body and soul yeah. and this movie really hits a lot of that yeah it does. there's a reason why you know a lot of these movies hit you and you have to almost watch it like evangelion i think you have to watch at the right time for it to just become a big part of you I think anybody i remember like most of my friends that have watched it in their 30s that never grew up with it we're like, eh, I don't get the hype. But I think when you experience the in your teens, when you're, you know, when you're changing, when you know, all that stuff is going through your head, yes. it's when it impacts you and it speaks to you. Just like this did when I watched it the second time on VHS without my friends. I was like, I, I wasn't on any drugs. I was legit just watching it after work one day. And I was like, man, this is deep. And... I had read the manga and I went back to watch it and it's, it's different than the manga. I loved it. It was well, crazy. Cause you brought up the question of like AI being able to take things from the internet and create. Like, oh, well, yeah, that's the fear right now. Right. Cause yeah, then like, what, how, what, what is but how can that persona decide, like really truly understand what I would decide in a moment though. But does it matter to that persona? No. Would it matter to your husband and child if you were still around with Fallout Boy TikToks, with obsessions with buying shirts, with tattooing your body? You, you know what? It, it gets weird. You're gonna get weird. Let's get weird because that, that's. I mean, that's that's where a lot of people fear that we're going. Yeah, that's true. What differentiates you from a machine from AI? It's true. And it comes down to uh, reproduction. I mean, remember, that was the basis of like one of the conversations. I love yes. that scene in the book. Yeah, yeah, he wanted to repeat. Yeah, he wanted Which to Which got, it. again, the motif coming out of water, right? Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Almost almost a, a little bit in your face about it. But yeah. it was it was a wonderful conversation that we're having. And if that's all it is, you find out that they can put your body and a little person and kind of make an extension of yourself, therefore a child. Yeah, well, it's, reproduction it, it, means you're human. Well, the, would it matter to an AI system? I don't would know. it would it matter to the puppet master at the end, taking over all the machines? Right, like yeah. that's the thing that you keep asking. It's a and that's why I enjoy this movie because it is things you keep going back to and asking. Rewatching this, I was sitting there going, "Huh, yeah, would How I?" Relevant for today's <laughs> world. It, because, I mean, if you think about it, the basis of humanity, we, we're very pompous people, right? Like we 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 are the we think of ourselves as the inheritors of this earth because, you know, mm -hmm. you come if you're if you grew up with the 
religious background, of course you are. Oh, you you, are, you have you you have full control over all the other animals. Now, if you take a step back and look at it, how pompous and cocky is that to say uh -huh. we have full dominion? It's uh, it's really interesting, like the to sit and have these kind of conversations, and yeah. I love when a something I like, like Ghost in the Shell or Evangelion, whenever those come, uh, whenever we talk about those, makes yeah. you think like that. And there's been several movies that make you, yeah, think like that. literature and picture are Torsten. You bring good point. The, yep, creator, the creator. It's a similar concept, but yes, it did not necessarily go this far. But it is about right. It was his child that was put into yeah. that body. Oh wait, spoiler alert. Don't wait, wait, don't, don't talk about that one, Ned. <laughs> alive. We can't talk about the creator. And at least another three years until you call and watch watched it. <laughs> uh, let me get to a couple of comments here. Anyone else feel kind of dirty back in the early days of anime in the West? Almost like you were doing something illegal. VHS tapes may not I be well stored in the back rental store. By Dude, I need to tell my story of Uro Tsukodoji another day. Maybe in the AMA uh, where I rented that. And I was 15 years old. And let me tell you how much that wrecked my brain as a 15-year-old kid. My daughter will be 15 this summer. And I can't even imagine, like, hell no. Keep that stuff away from my kids. Uh, getting deep. Time to break out the Bob Hope. Yeah, where's Bob Hope? <laughs> um, well, what? But kid was spontaneous. Like, spontaneous. Spontane. You almost got it. What we got? What do you got? Spont Go for it. A spontaneity. Oh my God, why can't I say that word? Spontaneity. Oh my God. <laughs> One glass of wine. Well, because I think about, you talk about like machines and, okay, think about the Google's AI, gen Genesis, right? Okay. I mean, is it really thinking for itself and creating like spontaneous things or is it just regurgitating information? Like, I guess if AI or if the sea of information becomes sentient enough, <laughs> that it can make its own decisions and it becomes spontaneous. But I mean, this is the plot to every sci-fi movie that does not end well, man. It, it does never end well. It never ends well. You're right. Uh, essentially, humans cease to exist. Terminator happens. We're all going to die. And that's the nihilistic version. Oh, thank you so much, Kane. You're such a sweetheart. Uh, March 14th is my actual, actual birthday. And Amanda is rocking her Danny Phantom shirt. I know. This Makes is one of my cartoon crushes. I love Danny Phantom. He was, I just, oh, he was adorable. I don't, I've never seen that show. Is that, like, I thought it was Ben 10, like Super Saiyan Ben 10, honestly. I'll be honest. No, with you. Uh, it's on Nickelodeon. It was on Nickelodeon. Um, he was, so he had the power of like being a ghost. And he could it's see it. And he had ghost breath and he could turn into a ghost. And he had Danny two Phantom. friends, and yes, Danny Phantom, because his parents were like ghost hunters, and they had all this technology, and he got stuck in. Anyways, I don't know what we're going on about Danny Phantom, but it's a great, it's a great show that was on Nickelodeon for a time, and I always thought Danny Phantom was really cute. Yay for youth, Adam. That's right. You're only as old as you feel. That's true. Uh, well, we can review Danny Phantom for your birthday month, Amanda. Oh, yeah. y'all heard it here. <laughs> so there is a. Josh just reminded me of something years ago, and I'm talking like That's good 15 point, yeah. years ago. I remember reading about how we didn't even call it AI. I cannot remember what we used to call it. There was a, Then again, there was a time before we called it streaming. We used to call it Netflix Live. We used to, What was it? Netflix On Demand. Netflix On Demand. Yeah. So all these words, you know, you don't even realize it change all this vocabulary. But I was reading about how programming like code was making its own code within a code how somebody had program a code like you know computer programming yeah a program a code and i can't remember if it was like COBOL. i can't remember the the program language they were using but that program had learned to program in another language in creating code now that's not technically sentient right that's not the program coming alive going i want to make my own children that's more of a code reacting to a code that was yes, pre-built, but it didn't do it until like the third year, yes. which the guy that had made the code didn't know was going to happen. And that was 15 years ago yeah. when people still use COBOL. I don't know if they still do or not. I don't and know now it's like, what are we even doing? If it's 
if it's gathering information from all over and now you have every everything is a, i don't care if you're watching this now your information's out there you have to sign yeah, up to google yeah. to, to watch videos uh to create an avatar like it's it's insane you can't get away from it like and now it can we make grab a video of us doing this video and we would oh, say yeah there, 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 there's things. there's because programs already that can yeah. you can you can freaking type watch 80 hours of near mint condition and then create me a video uh in the mannerisms and the style of the uncanny omar it's, it's getting it's getting it's getting ridiculous and it's getting uh very very ghost in the shelly it is. I, don't, I don't know if I want to live in that world or I not. I want to feel old. Remember, turn tuning into the TV Guide channel. Oh, I love the TV Guide channel. Yes. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna feel even older, Kane. I remember collecting TV guides when they had like comic book oh, characters. I, up. Yes, I don't, do they still I come out with TV guides? They, I think they still have TV guides, but I used to collect them for like when the OC would be on them or like Buffy was on it one time. Of so I used to collect TV guides. <laughs> the OC. Um. Let's review this, and th I've I've been having a lot uh, a lot of fun talking about this, no, I mean, and, and not I, guessing the show, but also the meaning of the life things that it makes you life, think, right? And that's the whole point of these movies. If you can walk out of a movie and talk about things that are way beyond the movie, I think that makes for a good experience. Okay. What would you give? And anybody that is watching, obviously, you know my answer is ten out of ten. Bato, yes, Bato, Bato, Bato. Did he have a? Did he have feelings for? Eh, no, no. I mean, it's hard like, to read him in the anime because I think he does, but then I think he was just being a gentleman when he puts the coat on her. Well, I think that's what any guy would do. Part, but even when he's there, like in the final moments, right before the Section Six snipers come in to try to take him out because they're trying to cover oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you get a little hint of that, right? Like, I just saw a hint. I, yeah, I just well, I mean, they've been around together for so long, so yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What would you all give this out of ten? And more importantly, because she's my wonderful host here, I'm just the co-host for this. What would you give this out of 10? Ooh, well, I guess you're the host this month since your birthday. No, nah, um, I'm still host. I would give this, I give this a solid like 10 out of 10. I loved it. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I really like We're going to make you a weeb, Amanda. I like this. <laughs> I still won't get the tattoos, but I love that. No, I really did. I want to. I want to rewatch it again just one more time just to the second honestly people hated uh the follow up to this I dug it I so like it That's the, there's not 2.0 right There's 1.5 and then there's uh 2 and then 2.0 is what Ghost in the Shell the remade like CG Ghost in the Shell is So Okay that makes I sense I know it gets confusing with all the numbering All right let me see what everybody else thought Nine out of 10, 10 out of 10, 12 out of 10, Whoa. eight out of 10, 20, 29 out of 10. It's coming up fast, guys. 2029. <laughs> we'll become a part of the internet out of 10. Kane, we will remember that uh, episode of Cowboy Bebop, how we will all join in that cult. Yeah, we'll all I'll join, join the internet if it's like the Black Mirror episode. Um, San... Sam Neil. Nope. Where the Sam two girls. Go into the afterlife in the don't, subconscious. Don't and spoil it in case they haven't seen it. Oh, come on. It's been out for I'm trying to figure out which one you're talking about. Four out of ten, of course. Of course. I'm gonna of just, course. Uh, Rate it. Oh, Would shock no. and surprise you that I've never seen Red? No, that wouldn't surprise me, Phil. Go and watch it. I thought Ghost in the Show was a dead tortoise. <laughs> Eight out of ten. Ten out of ten for the AVI preview. I would watch over and over in 1998. Oh Amanda's my. slowly becoming a weeb. Oh yeah. Oh, oh dude, of course then it deserves a rewatch, man. It deserves a rewatch. It was good. I thought it was a solid 9.5. Ghosts get a lot of get a solid cybernetic future out of 10. This stream gets an alpha omni out of 10. I'm gonna take that as a compliment. San Junipero. Is, That's the one good. I'm talking about. San Junipero. Oh, yeah. San like Junipero. Remember? The older ladies and their subconsciouses get put in. Oh, yeah. And they find each other like and fall in love. And then they just yeah, that's I like the one. that, yeah. And they want to stay there after they die. Again, the idea of what is human. You can live in this, like, cyber afterlife. Like, that's, what is your soul? That really throws the religious aspect on his head. Because where do you go? Oh, I mean, that's that's always been a thing, right? We, we tried yeah. to. Like I said, going back to the basics of just pompous and 
Yeah. We, we want to create our own immortality in a, in a, in a way we did that with, we do that with our children. You know, how much of yourself do you want to see in your child? And yes. And if you had the ability to put your conscience in a cloud, and I'm not talking about Walt Disney's head cut off uh, in Frozen, waiting for <laughs> they waiting for them to cure death. Would you want to? I mean, it, it, it can go real deep. It can be. I remember that Cowboy Bebop episode. I love that Cowboy Bebop episode. Um, it's always a compliment. Thanks, Carl. Standalone. What complex. is standalone? It was a TV show. They did two seasons. Uh, but that one is based more on the manga and they go on, they do different cases. Because oh, in the manga, okay. they do Puppet Master is just one of the big cases that they do. Okay, gotcha. So it's like a continuation of these two uh Bato, uh Matoko, Makoto, and how what would it what is it, the, the 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 other character's name? The guy that's in the uh, uh, he's he's with her at the very beginning. He doesn't play a big role in the movie. Like to the Togusa? Sea Togusa, I think. Was that his name? think so okay yeah those guys they play a big role all of um all the six play a bigger role in the tv show okay. than they did in the uh, in the movie because i mean there's just so many characters you can put in the movie and it's usually the ones that can stand out that you're that look different that you can tell that oh that guy played a bigger role in the manga probably when Wait, I go, let me go. No me to bring very back. much like an early, like late eighties, early nineties guy. The old dude, the the guy's in charge. Nope, not him. What is the, the guy with the mullet? He, yes, he had a mullet. Yes, he had a mullet. Mm -hmm. The guy yes. that's driving at the very beginning. Yeah, yes. that's what I was talking about. Okay, yeah, he looked very distinct, like, like a certain. Yeah, if they look unique and yeah, dude, how about that scene? Oh my god, I, I, that scene is so creepy when the guys, sh the the garbage truck guy, right, is showing the yes. other guy his wife and kid. He's like, yes. I do it for her. He's like, I'm not into that stuff. But you don't see what's in the freaking picture until later on, where they're like, look at the picture, and it's just him and the basset hound, of course. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. I love that, man. So many little things in this movie that I enjoy. Yes. How freaking wild would it be to see a Titan from no, Attack on Titan in real I life? I am okay. Sorry. That is something I would never want to see in real life. Thank you very much. I'm like, those things no, are... Just... The, them naked non-genitalia big dudes. No, no. I, do not, I don't need that in my life. Nothing I want to see in real life less than a Titan from Attack on Titan. <laughs> them big dudes running the way they... Uh-uh. Uh, 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 uh. No, I'm uh, good. I don't need to see that. All right. What's on what's on for uh I don't know. So aren't you gonna do a live poll for next week to see yeah, what yeah, I'll do one. I put what did I put it up? Would it put it up on Sunday? I think I yeah. put it up on Sunday. So look, make sure you're uh following us and I'll put the poll up on Sunday. So the question is, are you gonna let them vote on whether or not we're gonna do comedy or 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 sci-fi, right? Sci-fi or, or or fan it was fantasy, wasn't it fantasy? fantasy? Yeah, you so out of the four those yes. Yeah, so we still have three, and then you so you did a live poll right now, and then we chose the genre, and then you did a poll on the community channel for mm -hmm. which movie it was gonna be. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put a poll up right now. So if you're watching right now and make sure you go and vote. Uh it's gonna be up in the tab. Here we go. Uh, yes, no, James. Yes, there should be musicals, even though I think Omar hates all musicals or dislikes most of them. I like Little Shop of Horrors. And that's about it. Um, uh, and as we're waiting for the poll to come up, so the Oscars do come out. Oh, yeah. You talk a little bit about that. What are we going to do? Are we going to do anything? Go in um, I would like to do something. We are going to be watching it together. Um, I don't know how long. It depends on how long we all last. But Is we there going to be a slap? Video. If there's a slap, we're going to be there a while. I think this will be a very, I don't think it'll be that as exciting as last as two years ago. I think it'll be very easygoing. Um, I think the winners will be what we expect, minus a few upsets. Oh, I don't know. The Oscars always seem to surprise me with something and not in the good way. Like, the what? thing I'm looking forward to is seeing Ryan Gosling sing I Am Ken or I'm Just Ken in real life. Oh, they're going to do that? Oh, he, yep. He, they have confirmed he will be performing I'm Just Ken live sure. at the Oscars. So, yeah, did you I'll also know that. that he is, um, him and Margot Robbie top the top ten um, actors paid 
for the year, they were in number like two and four respectively. Well, she produced that movie, so I hope she, she sure as hell got paid. Adam Sandler's number one, and I just watched that Dude, movie. What? Adam Sandler has been number one for years, and I never had since 2002. Because he's smart. He makes these movies. He signs these producing deals with like Netflix and stuff, and he makes a ton of money. All right, everybody, the poll is up, and so far, fantasy is winning, but we will see as you all start voting. So make oh. sure if you're on your phone, you go and vote. If you are on um, on the computer, you go and vote, even if you don't care about any of these things. Just and join you us. just want to watch us, and you don't care what we review. Has this channel done airplane before? Let me tell you, uh, when it comes to comedy... My comedy choices are going to be pretty easy. That's going to be the stuff that I loved growing up. So Airplane's going to be on there. Naked Gun's going to be on there. Spaceballs is going to be on there. And then I'm like, wait, Witch Mel Brooks, Blazing Saddles, Young Frankensteiners, Spaceballs. Uh, so I think I'm going to put Spaceballs. Yeah. And, and Adam, I've videos. never seen Airplane or Spaceballs before. I know. I know. It's blasphemous. Um, Have you seen The Naked Gun? No, I've never seen The Naked Gun. So oh, don't me, worry. We'll watch the remake with Liam Neeson. Me, like the satire movies, you know, when I grew up, it was like scary movie and not another teen movie. And those were my satirical movies based off of whatever. Yes. So Yeah, you and I, I mean, we, we're not that far we're apart not, in age. But we're not far apart, but just enough. I mean, it's nostalgia, right? Like my nostalgia is yes. a little different. And honestly, whatever your parents were into, right? If your parents were not into Mel Brooks films or... They were not those type of sophomoric humor, then you probably now, Robin Hood Men in Tights. They were into, and I did see that, and that was fantastic. Oh my, do you ever wa do watch parties for these movies? If not, that would be a fun Patreon thing. Yeah. You know, a lot of people have asked us to, and it was a lot of fun. Amanda and I did it one time for do you remember what it was? It was like a TV show, I think. Was it Game of Thrones? No, 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 no. Nope, that was not. No. It's like the boys are invincible. I, I don't remember. It was something I, I remember going to your house and we did it, and we had a lot of people in the chat or in the Patreon we talking. Have to do that. Sure, that sounds fun. Yeah. Ah, thank you. It was Umbrella Academy. We'll have to pick one of these movies. Cause I feel like one of these movies would be a really fun one to do because they're older, obviously, but also because people have seen them, right? So they can add their own commentary. It's not like watching the first, I think it was the Umbrella Academy. It was like the season premiere, right? So we watched. Yeah, it was the season premiere. Yeah. Season In this two, case, it would be like watching a movie. A lot of people have already watched and everyone could be commenting on it live in live time. And yeah. And it's a lot of fun. And honestly, watching Amanda react to the horror movies will be a Patreon level. Maybe, on that's, on the one we do, uh, <laughs> maybe that's the one we should do it. Whatever yeah, horror that movie. way you're watching it with a bunch of friends. And you're not alone, and you don't have to turn on all the lights or look behind you at all times. Damn it. it was the Umbrella Academy. That's right. It was. That was a lot yeah. of fun. Well, Danger suggestion. Amazon. Oh, good. Yes, I love that movie. Dude, I love Amazon Women on the Moon and Kentucky Fried Movie. Both are excellent. Catholic schoolgirls in trouble. Come on. Me and my buddy Omni Dog love that skit. Catholic school girls in trouble is what the skit is called. Don't look it up right now. Oh, I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, I thought you were going to look it up. No, no. <laughs> See, don't don't look it up. Uh oh. Uh, okay. I'm gonna leave it up for a couple more minutes. Don't forget to go and vote. Oh, I think it's obvious what it's gonna be next week. Uh, maybe. The airplane watch party. Oh man, it would be annoying. All I do is quote that movie. Suggestion. The Lifetime Colonel Sanders movie starring Mario Lopez. Oh, wait, is that a real thing? That can't be real. Is that a real thing? Real. Why would they? Why would they cast? I thought it was him? Luis Guzman. No stop. Wow, Avatar: The Last Airbender got a double renewal. Seasons well, two that's and good. three. At least they're not going to try to. Well, they'll wrap it up then, right? Yeah, which is the animation is like ooh three is three seasons too, so that makes sense. Yeah, I'm glad they would. That the glad they're not doing a hobbit and like, oh, let's expand this into six. Yeah, seasons. let's 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 not. Oh, no. We've been there, and done that. No. Killer Crowns from Outer Space is one of my favorites. I watched that with my kid last year. My oldest daughter loves horror movies, so we we watch a lot together. And now it's come to the point where I'm like, oh, I guess I better share some slasher flicks with her. But slasher flicks also show like a lot of sexual content because that's the point, right? You have yep. sex, you die. You don't have sex, you live. That's happened in all the ones I've seen in the late 90s. 
Every single one. All of them, of them have heard, were dying after they had sex. I quite like the ones wow. that wow. have a little bit of a twist that you think the innocent virgin girl is going to live. And she's usually the first one to die. Yes. And I'm not going to say which movies, just in case people haven't watched them. But there are horror movies like that. Kentucky Fried Movie is the best. I love that movie so much, man. That's the um, uh, the, the Stucker, it's the Sucker Brothers, right? They put their mom in the movies. Like, I love the fact that they put their moms in the movies. Freddy Krueger always scared me as a kid. Doesn't help that us 80s kids got exposed to that stuff like at age eight. Correct, man. Jason X is actually one of my favorites. I like that. A lot of people hate it, but I love it. Yes, Phil, Young Frankenstein. Oh, I love those movies. No Soul Simpsons from Amazon. <laughs> I was I was quoting I was quoting that the other day when I was driving around with my brothers. My uh, my my brother Manuel is also a big fan of that uh, movie, and he was like, "What was the song?" And I was like, "Jeremiah was a bullfrog." I love that song. Jeremiah was <laughs> from. It's a skit that it's like every hour in America, a black man's born without a soul. So it's David Allen Greer playing Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> and all these other white people. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. That just made me laugh. Oh, I love that skit. I did rewatch a Netflix Avatar show. It's still okay. a ten out of, 7 out of 10. It could yeah, have been I still a would say that. Episode. Yeah. Jason in space, dude. It was so hokey. I, I liked it. I I watch it. Live action Avatar. So I'm watching the original. Wow, uh, you're on book three. That's how good it is, man. Oh, the book was three is, has hot Zuko. It is my, it's my favorite. That ending, like how Aang resolves everything. Mm, that sea turtle, man, or lion turtle, genius. I don't want to give it away, but don't give it away. Don't give it away. I know. I'm so and bad at that. Sutherland says the yes. Give me a good Hellraiser. Hellraiser one was really good. I like the first one. And honestly, two was it Hell on Earth? That wasn't that bad. Just the opening scene of Arsenio. <laughs> Dude, when he gets, I get that mad on the phone when people just keep calling and calling. The Avatar Pro prequel novels are up next to read after Legends and Lot. Oh, Kane. Yes, Legends and Latte. Wait, I got. I Did I read that right? Is I've got bookshops and bone Oh, when we were at New York yeah, Comic Con. To the Legends and Lattes. But I want to know what happens after because I love how the first book ended. And yeah, these are, yeah, if you're into fantasy and Dungeons and Dragons, and you should definitely, and romance, a little bit of romance and action, you should read these books. That's great. I, um, I'll probably go easy on Amanda. I'll put Aliens on there. It's not much of a horror movie, but it's a classic. Halloween's. I mean, Clearly there's so many classics. Week, so. Yeah, Have you, you got a week to prep yourself up. I actually like the Tales from the Crypt movie. Demon Knight, that movie's solid to this day. The apartment victim is so good, man. Now you all got me wanting to go watch Amazon Women on the Moon. Um. Well, since there will be a season two, if The Rock does not cameo and parody himself as Boulder... Be that, would be, that would kind of make up for a little bit of, yes, that would be pretty cool. Because that's what the boulder, he's like a kind of, well, an earth bender, like wrestler type of thing. Hi, Richard. How you doing, Richard? Insane clowns from a, or just killer, killer clowns. Unless they made a sequel called Insane Clowns. I don't know. Those uh, are, I've never, yeah. Dog Soldiers. Actually, Amanda watched uh, Neil's other movie. Um, he's, she's seen a couple of his movies. Uh, Neil Marshall, he's the guy that did uh, oh probably some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones, but he yeah, did yeah, yeah. unfortunately he did that Hellboy movie, but what's apparently he was there? having an affair with what's her name. That's why it wasn't any good. Um, but he did did the Descent. Oh God, yeah, I did see the Descent. Dark Soldiers isn't as scary as the Descent, so you'll be good. No, no, you'll be good. Descent is terrifying, but I had to see it because sometimes there's a horror movie where the where the hype is so big, I'm like, I will sacrifice my being terrified to see it. The Descent is one of those. Barbarian was another one. The Descent like was legit. Like that, I don't scared. jump scare. I don't yes. get scared easy. And that movie made me jump. I will never it's go around sound. It's a good thing I'm not a natural person who loves to like go cave diving. I'll never do that. No, splunking? Never. You don't want to go splunking? Never. Um, someone asked if I saw Ready or Not, and I had. Why? Because of Adam Brody and I love Adam Brody and Samara weaving. Obviously she's great. Uh, but I was, I was like, Oh, he, 
This is exciting, and I love him. And he's also in American Fiction. What a pleasant surprise that was to see him as a little. That wasn't pleasant surprise. <laughs> pleasant surprise, Omar. <laughs> um, which I did watch American Fiction. I really liked it. I did not know where that movie was going. Like the premise. Yeah. I'm too. Well, you yes. know what we should do? We yes. should rank the Oscar movies because I just got one more to watch. Maybe we I'm gonna it. try to get it in Friday because I got a lot of editing to do tomorrow. Uh, and we should t uh, do the tier ranking. You decide on when we do it, though. Omar, well, use your magic to have the original okay. Goosebumps books all reprinted with the original bumpy texture on. I don't know how much magic you think I have, but I will try. Did you guys hear about John Cena's upcoming movie on Amazon? No. Wait, is it what the? Is it? What is it? Is it the freelance movie that got a zero percent or whatever? Because yes, I've heard about that. Is it also the other movie that he's doing with Zach? Efron, but I thought it was coming out in theaters where he plays like that kind of friend, the friend who just kind of ruins everything. Hmm. Rick Sinicki. Oh God! I showed Black Hands Man in my film class this week. Nice. One girl wanted to be offended, and the black guys told her to drop it. <laughs> Thank God. That's what American Fiction reminds me of because that's such a good case in point. Oh, I love it. That's what, I mean, it's so true. Like when you were watching American Fiction, Omar, you watched it, right? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking um, of certain people, think. like for some of those, like, oh, white come on. Yes, absolutely. that were trying to vote on the best, like, even though both, you know, black authors, like, no, this is not like a good book. <laughs> even the one that, the book, um, Ricky Stenicki, that's the, yes, that's the Zac Efron one. That's, it's, I, I thought the trailer was kind of funny. So I'm I'm up for You're good, Jack. Good night, Jack. <laughs> Don't lie, that's why people can't resist putting on sure. the dangerous scares. I'm gonna go and investigate. Uh, poor <laughs> things. Did you watch Poor Things? No, it's, it's on Hulu tomorrow. I had to watch Ghost in the Shell, so I had to take a break mm. to, to watch Ghost in the Shell. But I'll be watching probably tonight when we're done here. I'm probably gonna throw Poor Things on. I'm very excited to watch it. Very, Just very until it's on Hulu tomorrow. I know. But Wait, I are you done with the Oscars, or is that the only? Is that your last Oscar movie you got to watch? Um, no, I think I have to do Zone of Interest. Zone of Interest, okay. Mm. Oh, that dude, that will that will, that will wreck you. That will wreck you. Um, okay, and it looks like horror next week. So I'll try to think of some not so scary, but also a little spooky movies. And I'm sure somebody that doesn't I mean, watch that show any, always any leaves a car. These horror. aren't scary at all. <laughs> I mean, Omar's made me watch some pretty scary things. Before. Yeah, like for real, the descent is legit scary, and I was really proud Record that you stayed the whole time. Record is legit scary, but I'm I'm gonna watch it in the dark in your basement. Because I'm for, dude, if you threw if you took your phone out, I it, I'll rip your damn watch off your wrist if you have your iPhone watch on. Getting notifications from Fallout Boy in the middle of a horror movie. How dare you? Don't know you know what they're going to be posting. You don't know what's going to happen. What if they announce something? I don't give a flying. Oh, okay. <laughs> what they're posting. We're watching a horror movie, old school. Um, yeah, so I'll put some stuff in there, like The Exorcist, some classics, you know? I did watch, I finally watched Thanksgiving. I like no, three I fourths of it. it. I, I like three fourths of it. I did not like where it went. It oh, lost me, which was so. I thought they had something special, but eh. I think the type of horror Amanda wants to watch is Scooby Doo and Zombie. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and I've seen like most of the like late '90s slasher films because they starred a lot of teen actors. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's even horror. It's just is it or is it thriller? I don't even know. Yeah, that's like slasher flicks, like you talking I'm, about Scream? Those movies? Scream. Uh, I know you did last summer. All that stuff. Pretty much if it had if the poster had hot people. On the front cover, yeah, faculty, and it said dimension faculty. films up at the top. If fact was that, oh yeah, Final Destination, like those, like those, yeah. those films. I've seen those. But at Devin Sawa, Josh Hartnett, Elijah Wood, like it, it, Usher, if he was in it for some reason, because they're like, let's yeah, do this. Black that to, that like, to me is <laughs> that's this, what I want, and I, and I think that's why I don't like Scream. I, I never liked the original Wes Craven Scream. That to me is all this. Bad, uh, what I like to call the super sexy era of horror movies. And yes, I know that horror movies are always supposed to have good looking people because that's how you get but audiences to come and watch. It, yeah. But in this era, it was just. You know, like so Jennifer Love running around with her big old. Big old what? 
tatas in that that cybernetic that, cybernetic she's in that like tank top and well, she's no, running. I'll I'll I'll, t I'll give you this. I did like the faculty though. That was a uh, Robert Rodriguez. Oh, no, the faculty remember. was great. Yeah. Okay, I don't know about great. It was fun. But was he fun. tends to make those movies fun. Like uh, what's the one that he did? Uh, Planet Terror. Planet Terror. That was a fun movie. Not necessarily it. scary, but a fun movie. I thought. Yeah. There's somebody out your window, by the way. I don't know if you knew or not. <laughs> Did you just reach across the internet to smack me? <laughs> Metaphorically or simulated in the head. I felt it. Pumpkin Head is a classic. Yeah, Josh was saying that earlier. I love that movie. I didn't watch any like first... Jasons and stuff. I would like to like I've watched Halloween flicks, the Halloween. I don't Yeah, really but you saw the new Curtis. Halloween ones. Did you see you ever see the classics with like Jamie Lee Curtis? No. Mm. Dude, my brother legit loves Final Destination movies, like loves them. And I have to watch, uh, I don't know, I've watched them all with him. And he also loves the Saw movies too, which I think. Yeah, oh, I can't watch, like, I don't like torture porn, so let's not put any of that shit on. Like, that's no. Torture I've porn. watched the original Saw, and. You know, that was torture porn. <laughs> I the really? Dead, I mean, yes. I don't remember any it's penetration in that movie. Because it's glorifying, watch like it's the glorification of watching people get tortured. I mean, I don't, ugh, I don't like that. No, 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 no. torturing each other because they got to get out because the key is hitting inside of that dude's stomach, so you got to rip it out. Ah, um, that, but they get more on, on trying to Nickelodeon. Be what was Double Dare? That show, The Hills it's Have Eyes. The original is a classic. The original is a classic. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I'll, I'll think of some horror movies. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those either. I mean, I don't know. House Last House on Left. I, I can see. Yeah, those are really popular, like in the late 70s. They didn't really do them in like I did watch Strangers. That was is that a horror movie? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the original okay. one, I was uh who was I telling the other day to uh Ills is what the original what strangers is based on that to me had a creepier ending than strangers mm. <laughs> double dare was a classic tv show mark summers was the best he was i always wanted to be in double dare i wish i could be double dare there's a lot of things i wish i was on Leg legends of the hidden temple i would have even been on global guts i mean i don't know what that is i would have been in clarissa explains it all just to in knock out that fool sam and then start hitting on my girl <laughs> melissa jodar Oh my goodness! Yeah, she's an okay actress. When you really think about it, after I watched uh, "Drive Me Crazy," I was like, "Oh, she's just an okay actress." How dare you? She was a cutie, and they get look at the world we live in. We have Sydney Sweeney as one of the top actresses right now. I say top paid. There's only two in the top ten actors: women, Jennifer Aniston and Margot Robbie. And I, don't, I guess, Morning Show must pay Jennifer Aniston a shit ton to be on that show. I'm surprised Reese Witherspoon's on there. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Project Viking. <laughs> <laughs> Project Viking, my man. House Party I remakes. I agree with Josh. That was a piece of garbage. Can no longer drive behind a truck carrying anything. Yes. Yeah, when my brother's hiding, by, like driving behind the wheel, he will yeah. not drive. And I'm like, Quit. nobody's going to Final Destination you. There's memes about board. how millennials, like there's something that triggered millennials and it's driving behind log truck because of Final Destination. That one, I like that one. That's the one with the, is it Ethan Hawke or Matt Dillon? I always get them to do this. I think it's Ethan Hawke. That's a good one. She saw it with us. Not the yeah. not the Tim Curry, but I've seen the new ones. Both yeah. It Chapter Two and the original It. Oh my God! Yes, adorable Brent. I'm so glad I you said the that, original. Yes. Now, did you see the original? I've seen the original. Or the American and I've one. Seen the, yes, on the American. I've seen both. That, the, the original one to me is a masterpiece. Let the right one in is a mat. I love that movie. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's not re like. Not horror kind of tricks you into thinking it's a horror movie, but it's something else. Like, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. Salute your shorts, it's probably oh, Ethan Hawke's best horror uh movie. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. How do you feel about the upcoming Nosferatu movie? Oh, they're are they remaking it, or is it like the William Defoe movie about the actor that played Nosferatu? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of uh good horror out there. I'm gonna pick some good ones for Amanda. So if you have any recommendations, leave them in the comment section for us. We're gonna scare the bejesus out of her. Can't wait. So yeah. excited. Yeah. And we'll do another uh we'll do a Patreon exclusive where you can watch a horror movie along with us, and I'll pick another yeah. one for us to watch together. It'll yeah, be great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. Completely worth it. Good morning, Buggy. How are you? Hey, Buggy. It's good to see you. Hope your morning's going well. 
I'm about to uh, go lay down in bed. <laughs> that's fine. That's oh, yeah. Nine nine thirty. Yeah, that's her bed. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, Google Brett Hogan's like I gotta put the kids to bed. Same Z's. Same Z's, man. The Wicker Man, not the Nick Cage one. Not the bees. All right. Who wouldn't watch some Nick Cage though? That's just amazing. Color of space, right? Like uh, what do we got? What do we got, Amanda? What are we doing? Have you decided? What are we doing for the Oscars? And then we can go. Oh, I mean, I, that's up to you. I'm good with uh doing it on Friday night. Friday night would probably be better. Let me look at my calendar really quick. But it's Saturday. We could do Saturday too. We could take a break from the Oscars to do a quick recap show. Don't they have like a nice in between? When do the what time does the Oscars start? Starts at seven. Yeah, so why don't we do a show at eight? Nothing good will be on uh, decided we'll until be nine o'clock, huh? So we'll be here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have to do it here. I don't do have. You have two <laughs> chairs. I can bring Corey's chair upstairs. That's fine. Well, no, I just give me a kitchen chair. It's fine. No, his chair reclines. It has. Like oh a no! I was gonna take your chair. You can take the kitchen chair. Is what my point? Was. Oh my god! <laughs> it's my birthday month, baby. <laughs> the Oscars is on Sunday, March 10th at 7 p.m. Yes. Eastern Standard Time. So follow us on our social media and we'll, we'll let you know when we're going to do it. Uh, either Friday or actually Sunday. Take a break from watching the Oscars to do a show. Up to Amanda. It's her house. So it's her birthday. It is. Well, we have oh, guests. Do you think any of those people really care for missing for an hour? That's we too see them all the time. All right, Omar can I am not going to sit on the phone. It is my birthday. Well, to be fair, if I tilt this down far enough, he can sit back. Oh, I could straighten out your books. I see a mess back there. I can oh, fix it. Oh, it is. You need to organize my books. I don't know how I want to organize I'm going to make a TikTok. I'm going to organize your books. I got you. I got you. And I got to take you the latest art book I got. All right. Hey. Okay. We have decided. Sort of. We got a plan. It's what we, we do. We know we're doing horror next week. That we, that's what we do. That's, now. that's the biggie. Unfortunately. That's the biggie, that's the biggie takeaway from here. All right, Panda, tell everybody what's up. So, yes. All right. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't for hit, forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Remember to follow us on all of our social media channels at NearMakeCon. Remember to check us out on Spreadshop for some great Near Make Edition merchandise. And also check us out on Patreon for a dollar a month or more. You can support us here, what we do, and then Maybe get some cool perks like watch me scream at a horror movie on Discord one night. Um, and last but not least, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint. Good journey to all our one. And we will see you for our Oscars predictions. Yay. Happy yeah. birthday, Omar. Thank you so much, Amanda. <laughs> Good night, everybody.